Maybe we can turn off our cameras for now and let people join then, yeah.
Ah, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. All right, all right. Um, let's see. I think maybe we should give other people maybe um a minute to join because I see that uh, 335 people registered and uh, at the moment we have 38 people in the chat and others are streaming on our our YouTube platforms. So let's just uh, give them a minute, then we will start. Yeah, I think we're ready to start. Um, 
please just confirm one more time if you're able to hear me. Loud and clear. Sure. All right, all right. Um, thank you so much once again to all of you who have joined us. Uh, my name is Enoch Soko, and I'm the founder of Enoch Soko Tutoring Services, as the name suggests. So I thank you so much for taking this time. Um, thank you so much for taking the time on a Saturday to speak to all students across South Africa. This goes to Albert and Yvonne. Uh, thank you so much. And um, before we start, I would like to give the platform to uh, the people who are joining us. Some are joining us from uh, our YouTube stream and others are here on, um, on the Google Meet. So just to get a feel of you know the demographics of the people who are part of this uh, monumental event. So please just use the chat icon um, for those who are in the Google Meet. It's at the bottom right of um of your of your device please uh comment in the chat which institution you are from so yeah let's just see um where you guys are coming from i myself i'm from uj um i see that someone is from uh free state who have uj we have unisa we have namibia we have um university of free state another uj student someone from mill park uh, someone from uh, an institution that I really can't even pronounce. So we welcome you. And um, for those who are um, who are joining us on our um, on our YouTube stream, please also just uh, comment. We'll be able to you know read your comments. So let's see. Uh, we have UJ again. We have UP. We have uh, Free State. Okay. We, we we keep receiving responses. Okay. I see that Free State is dominating, uh, Eunice again. All right, thank you so much. Um, you're all welcome to our first online event. As I said, my name is Enoch Soko, and I'll be your host and the facilitator for this event. Uh, I'm joined by two brilliant minds, uh, Yvonne and Albert. These are qualified chartered accountants. So I welcome uh, our two guests. Albert, thank you so much for taking the time on this uh, Saturday. And also, Yvonne, thank you so much for taking this time. I know you have been quite busy during the week, and now you're just enjoying your tea. But now, you know, you also made the time to be part of this event. So I thank you so much. And um, to the people who are joining us live, I understand that, you know, I myself being a student, I understand that, you know, during the week we are tired and we just want to use this weekend to rest. But I thank each one of you, you know, for taking this time to chat with these chartered accountants and, um, you know, taking the opportunity to develop yourselves and um, reminding yourself, you know, to reach your goal and um, taking this time to, you know, get inspiration from other students who are joining us and, you know, people who have walked the same journey that, you know, you guys are on. So thank you so much for, you know, taking the time. And yeah, as I said at the beginning, um, you know, we have people from um, across South Africa, you know, across uh, South African universities, even those um, in high schools. So 335 people registered for this event. And let me just share with you some of the, some of the statistics. I'll share with them shortly. Um, okay. So in attendance, we have those who are doing their CTAs, those who are doing third year, fourth year, and um, we can see that the majority of the people who are in attendance are those who are doing their third years, you know, so they understand the need of, you know, being part of such an event, you know, they understand the need of um, speaking to someone who has walked the journey as them. So I thank you all for, you know, being part of this. We have four students who are in high school. Um, so which is quite interesting to see someone who's in high school would you know has already made up her mind or his mind that you know they would like to pursue this um uh this profession these are opportunities which i i was never exposed to in high school so um like you people who are in high school and um yeah so once again to those who are on youtube uh, feel free to you know leave a comment and uh, you know, just tell us which university you're from. I see that um, you know the chat has been dominated by Vets, UJ, and UP. So I'm assuming that this, these are the universities where students who are doing accounting they don't like you know partying on weekends. 
because you are here <laughs> attending this online event so thank you once again and um yeah i think um we are ready to start once again as i said um, my name is Enoch soko and um i'm the founder of Enoch soko tutoring services and i welcome you once again to our first online event titled a chat with a ca you know so i just want to welcome each each one of you and just to tell you that you know be calm you know feel at home we're not here to remind you of your semester marks but we're here you know to inspire you you know to give you that push um as you're about to prepare you know for your exam so you know be free and uh feel at ease Yvonne and Albert, uh, thank you so much, you know, for taking the time on this Saturday again, as I said, to speak to students um, all across South Africa. Firstly, uh, give us a little bit of background of yourself and uh, what you do on a on a daily basis. You know, anyone can go, uh, can can answer this. It can be Albert or Yvonne. You can go first. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Yvonne. Um, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me uh, today. I'm really happy to spend my Saturday this way. <laughs> um, just a little bit about myself. Um, I was, you know, an average student in high school and uh, didn't particularly like accounting. Um, but one day uh, I was in boarding, so, uh, you know, it wasn't the best of, of times you know not it, it was just a normal boarding school uh experience uh without any inspiration and i was just getting average marks and you know getting by but on one of the weekends we had a, a lady from kpmg come in just to speak to us about um the future and you know um what possible career options there are after you finish um high school and university and she was a chartered accountant and her story inspired me because uh she also came from an underprivileged background and she explained that you know through following that career path she was able to build a good life for herself and her family so mm -hmm. i saw a little bit of myself in her story and from that day, I think subconsciously, I decided that this was the path that I wanted to pursue. So I had made the decision in high school around grade 10. So now it was time, you know, to find out more about the profession and find out, you know, what it took to become a chartered accountant. So from then on, uh, I would I engaged with my teachers about you know what was the best thing to study and where um, was a good institution to study in order to become a chartered accountant. Unfortunately, I had just good enough marks to make it to study accounting at um, Stellenbosch University. So I started my undergrad degree there uh, in 2016, right after high school. And yeah, but when I got there, you know, it was, uh, it was a shocking experience. I felt like I had a, the rug pulled out of my feet because my first year I didn't do very well and accounting, financial, financial accounting was my downfall because I didn't have a good foundation and I hadn't um, developed, you know, love for it because I feel like you need to really love um, what you're doing to be successful. So. I, I wasn't giving it my best and yeah, I ended up failing my first year. So the three year degree took me four years and fortunately I managed to complete the degree in 2019. Um, but after that, um, I needed to do my honors if I wanted to become a chartered accountant, but as most of the third year and the CTA students or even second year students here know, um, universities need you to get a, you know specific marks in order to qualify for the honors program. So I didn't get good enough marks to make 
uh, the owner's program at Stellenbosch. So I needed to see what other options were available um, for me and um, what turned out to be um, a very good thing for me was that uh, I could start my articles immediately after getting my degree. So I, I thought that was a brilliant thing. So I started doing my training contract in 2020 and registered to do my CTA uh, part-time. Um, I, I was happy, I was so happy, I was so excited. I had been dreaming to get articles and there I was finally doing my articles. And I managed to register with Millpark. Uh, and, and, you know, everything was, everything seemed, you know, to, to be, to work out perfectly. But in 2020, you know, things weren't smooth, you know, COVID came in and I struggled to balance work and studies and, you know, uh, with poor studying technique and with a poor attitude, <laughs> uh, my studies, you know, um, ended up taking a, a, a back foot and the results weren't good and I failed my CTA. So, you know, I reflected at the end of, uh, at the end of my CTA year and fortunately I had the chance to do my CTA again in 2021 and using all the lessons I had learned from my undergrad and my first attempt of CTA, I managed to turn things around and fortunately uh, passed my CTA in 2021. Then I went on to write my board exams in 2022 mm. and finished my articles in January of this year and wow. qualified as a chartered accountant. And uh, fortunately things worked out. Uh, I got a job in the UK where I now work um, as an assistant audit manager and yeah, that's a very long story, <laughs> but wow. that's uh, that's the path which I took to get here. So that's a bit of background on myself and day to day. Um, mm -hmm. I work as an audit as an auditor. So the auditing module uh, at school that's essentially my life. I audit financial statements and um, yeah, I work within teams and. And yeah, that's my daily life. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Wow, that was quite a mouthful. But thank you so much, Albert. And um, you know, your story is inspiring to many. You know, being an average student to now, you know, becoming a CA. You know, some of these challenges that you know you went through. Um, you know, all of us are going through them. You know, um, you know, struggling. You know, to jump from high school to university and like you know facing those kind of challenges. You know. Uh, it just shows the, the amount of re resilience that, you know, you have. And, um, you know, th in the chat, people are saying congratulations and well done on your achievement. So, you know, everyone is proud of you and, um, you know, they're inspired, you know, just to hear from you. And uh, you also did mention that, um, you know, you had an opportunity to to speak to someone who was uh, already qualified when you're in, in, in high school. And, you know, they did speak about... Um, you know, coming from a poor background and, you know, the profession, um, through the profession being able, you know, to provide for themselves. So I won't ask much, but hopefully the money is worth it. Uh, you know, we'll unpack this throughout the, you know, throughout the uh, the, the time. But um, yeah, just a reminder to those who are joining us from YouTube and those who are uh, here on Teams, please leave your, your questions in the chat. Then, you know, I'll I'll pause them to our speaker at the end, um, you know, at the end of, of the session. So thank you so much once again for joining us. And as I said, um, you know, we're joined by two chartered accountants. Um, Albert has, sh has shared us, has shared with us a bit of his story. You know, now let's hear uh, from Yvonne. Yvonne, thank you. Hi everyone, it's uh, it's great to be here and uh, meet you. Some of you are familiar, so um, I see some very familiar names. It's great to to see you to see you here again. Uh, so I wanted to be a chartered accountant from the age of seven. Um, my grade two teacher, for some reason, um, 
she must have seen something similar in my personality to her niece and her niece was a chartered accountant and she was like i think it'd make a great chartered accountant and i went home and told my mom i'm going to be a chartered accountant i had no idea what it was i had no idea uh, no one in my family um had a degree or had studied a degree my mom hadn't even finished high school um i don't i can't even remember if my dad did uh so it was not a common thing and my mom dad were yeah sure you know you do what you need to do and like dreams and all the rest of that uh, I fell in love with uh, accounting the very first day of high school. So when I eventually did start studying accounting, I absolutely fell in love with it. I did very, very well at school. Um, did, you know, like really, really good marks at school. But based on some really bad school advice from my guidance teacher, I finished my high school at a technical college, which meant that I did not have uh, entrance to university. So no university in the country would touch me and all of them told me that I would never study to be a CA. I would never, I would never get a degree. So I spent two years after my uh, college fighting to get into a university and studying whatever I needed to do to get into, into university. Um, my parents had no money, so I knew I had to pay for my own studies. So I started working as soon as I left school and I paid for my studies and I did everything part time. Uh, I eventually, UNISA allowed me to register for my degree in 2001. So that's a bit of a while ago. <laughs> no. Wait, Was I even born by then? <laughs> <laughs> Don't even say it. Don't even say it. Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, so I started my degree in 2001 at UNISA. Uh, because I was studying part-time, it took me five years. So I um, did. I finished my degree um, in 2005. I did my CTA also through UNISA in 2006. I passed first time. I started my articles at a, at a medium-sized international firm in 2007. Um, and um, I wrote my first board exam that year. I passed my board exam. But you don't get paid a lot when you do articles as people will either know or not know, you don't get paid a lot. And uh, one of uh, the people who had lectured me at a part-time, at a private institution in my CTA asked me if I would lecture, if I would do part-time lectures. And I said, no, there's no way that I'm standing up in front of a group of people and trying to teach them. And he convinced me because I needed the money. I said, yes. And I fell in love with teaching. And so my dream of becoming an audit partner went out the window overnight and I decided I do not want to be an audit partner. I do not want to be in auditing. I want to teach. And so I, I lectured auditing um, and I've been lecturing auditing since then. So I've been lecturing for over 16, 16 years now. I wow. wow. uh, finished my articles and qualified in 2009, went into lecturing full time for a private institution uh, in 2010. So I've been I've been lecturing um, undergrad, CTA, post postgrad board levels. Um, for 15, 16 years, for predominantly focusing on UNISA students. Um, I, I focus, I lecture, I now work for myself. I focus on, on study coaching, mindset and strategy, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Um, we live in Montenegro, which is a very, very small country next to Croatia. So we, we work online. So I don't, you know, I don't have an office. I don't have to be anywhere, hmm. which is great. Um, and I'm studying my master's this year wow. through the University of Pretoria of all places. So I'm sitting in Montenegro, but I'm doing online and I'm doing my master's through University of Pretoria and I'm focusing on uh, mindset, the impact of, of mindset in accounting students and accounting studies. Um, yeah, so I don't really work in accounting. I'm not actually doing accounting. So when the restaurant yeah. bill comes, at the end of the meal, I'm not the one who's going to add up the restaurant bowl. <laughs> That's Albert. <laughs> That's Albert, right? So for all those of you who are like, yeah, my maths is not so great, it's hmm. fine. <laughs> That's what calculators are for. It's good. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story with us. Uh, it's quite inspiring. And as you can see from the chat, people are, you know, clapping and, um, you know, you did mention that, you know, you had to pay for your own studies. And in the chat, I saw that someone was saying that, you know, balancing studying and work is quite demanding. But like um, you had to do that because, you know, you had to pay for your own studies. And, you know, we'll unpack that um, throughout the interview. But thank you so much for your story. And just to show off to, you know, the people who are attending, as you can see that, you know, our panelists are international uh professionals you know we're not only just based in south africa uk and montenegro as you can hear so 
you are in you know in the right space and you know you you have people who have the right experience uh they have walked the path that you know you are on and you know they are here you know to share some of the experiences and the insight so thank you so much yvonne and albert and um so albert um as you can tell you know that in this session today we have many students you know from across universities in south africa um it is fair to say that you know they all have an idea of you know the chartered accountancy profession and are interested you know in pursuing this um career path you know as you can see that there are others who are you know um in high school for example then you know there are those who are at universities you know those who are um, doing their cta who are first years you know it's quite um a variety of students so may please just you know um give us some clarity as to what is required you know to qualify as um, a chartered accountant. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that, Enoch. Um, do you, can you share um, a slide um, that shows? Thank you. All right. Just um, let me know if you're able to see my screen. Okay. Can see your screen. Thanks. Um, no. So yeah, probably fifty percent of 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 students at this stage uh, know uh, the path that they have to take to qualify as as chartered accountants but i just wanted to to do a recap of of uh, of the steps that one has to take so that um you know you, you are you are familiar with with what this journey requires and the first point of call is doing um an an accredited university accounting undergraduate degree so most of you have already said you're from the university of free state uh uj vids up mill park unisa all of these institutions offer accredited psycho degrees so you're already on the right path there then the next step would be to complete your cta your certificate of theory in accounting which other institutions call postgraduate diplomas in accounting or honors uh, in accounting. So your undergrad degree and this CTA postgrad um, diploma, they offer you know, a similar thing, which is they give you the technical tools, you know, they, they teach you how to you know, actually do the job, how to do the calculations, how to, to tackle um the work that you would do as a chartered accountant okay then after that you are expected to enter into a training contract with a firm so the training contract or articles is where you actually put into practice all of the technical tools that you have been taught um, throughout your undergrad and your cta years so in your training, you actually work on real life projects uh, with uh, with uh, with team with uh, with other people in your team. Uh, you can work in an audit firm, or you can work in any other institution. Um, so this is good because you know it, it it's 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 real life. Uh, it 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 prepares you for the actual work that you will do once you qualify. So. I, I know as students, we have anxiety that, you know, we, uh, how am I going to remember such a large volume of work? Uh, because the, 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 the work that we do from an academic point of view is quite broad and technical, but the training contract gives you an opportunity to fully explore uh, the real world in, and you have guidance there and every year um you 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 learn more things and you take on more projects so it's a really um good stepping stone stone it's a it's it's it 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 molds you into being a professional so that's 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 the the training contract so yeah we'll speak more about how to get a training contract and um um, what that entails. Then during your articles, during your three years of articles, you are expected to complete uh, two board exams. 
which are the initial test of competence, ITC, and the assessment of professional competence. So the initial test of competence, your ITC, is done at the beginning of your training contract. So this tests, this tests uh, your technical skills. It tests the, the work that you have done in your undergrad degree and your CTA years. So this is really similar to you know, the normal exams that you would write um, in your CTA. Then the assessment of professional competence, this tests, um, you, this tests the experience that you have gained in your training contract, whether you're able to communicate in a professional manner, whether you have, you know, you are able to make ethical decisions um, in a given scenario. So all of these things are things that, skills that you would have developed during your training contract. So, so that's the final step uh, when, when, when you are qualifying as a chartered accountant. Then after that, yay, finally, you can register as a CASA with SICA. So it, it does seem like it's, <laughs> it's a lot, but mm. that is the overview uh, of the process. Uh, Yvonne, please uh, just let me know if I've missed out on any important detail on this on this journey um i think if you know one of the things that i see come up if you just want to um, clarify the difference between doing this full-time as a sort of ideal um or what this would look like if you wanted to start your articles during your degree or before your cta because that looks a little different okay so this is sort of like the very you know uh this is one of the the paths that you can take to becoming a chartered accountant but if for example you are uh you are out of high school and you have already such a strong conviction that you want to become a chartered accountant and straight from grade 12 you're like i want to you know pursue this journey so um there are a number of training firms in the country that offer articles straight from metric so you can start uh doing your article straight from the trick and you can do your cta uh so you can do your um undergrad degree while you do your training so you you would obviously need to do your training your articles uh part time sorry you would need to do your undergrad degree part time um you would then after that you would do your cta part time and you would write your board exams, um, then you would qualify as a chartered accountant. So you can st you 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 don't have to completely finish your CTA before starting your training contract. You can start your training contract after completing matric or after completing your undergrad degree. So those are the variations. Uh, but if you need further guidance on that. I think um, it's best to speak to, you know, your lecturers or to send um, someone who's already qualified, you know, uh, an email or a LinkedIn message or, you know, myself or maybe Yvonne as well, <laughs> if she, she would have the capacity to answer your LinkedIn message or email. But um, it is very flexible to accommodate your situation because not everyone is able to get funding to study uh, their undergrad degree immediately after matric. Maybe it's best for, you know, in your situation to start earning money and to pay for your own studies while gaining experience. So it, the, the path to qualifying is flexible and it's, it's realistic, yes. Wow. Um... First of all, thank you so much for, you know, outlining, um, you know, the journey, you know, to becoming a CASA. Although it looks like it's quite a long journey, but I mean, everything seems impossible until, you know, it's done, you know. So you are, you know, the, the testament to, uh, you know, overcoming our fears and, you know, finally qualifying as, you know, as chartered accountants. So thank you so much for that, Albert. And um, 
you know, Yvonne, as you have noticed that, you know, the journey to becoming a chartered accountant requires a student to, you know, spend countless hours studying. And um, as a study coach yourself, um, what are some of the most important characteristics that make successful students in their undergraduate studies? And um, secondly, uh, what additional skills does a student need to develop, you know, to be successful uh, in their postgraduate studies, especially those who are, you know, doing CTAs. Mm. Uh, I've received so many comments relating to CTA yeah, showing flame. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. yeah, I see that. Mm. Uh, yeah, a very good question. And I think um, we need to, we need, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift this around. We need to swap that around. So what we normally do is we say, okay, tell me what I need to do in undergrad. And then tell me what I need to do in CTA and then tell me what I need to do in ITC. But let's flip that around because we need to ask ourselves, what are you working towards? And you need to work backwards, right? So what most people don't really understand is that your final board exam, APC, that is like the final culmination of all the skills. And that is SICA, the, the charts of accounts and profession, that is their last gateway. Like that is their last gate to say you are now professional. Right. So that means that everything else you do, your ITC, your CTA or PGDA, your undergrad, everything is working towards that. So everything you do is building on top of that. So it makes a lot more sense to go, what am I going to be expected to do here? And then what does that mean for ITC? What does it mean for CTA? What does it mean for undergrad? What does it mean for like first year, et cetera? And so I'm going to start this way, because if you're an undergrad now, you need to know what's coming. Because, yes, obviously you want to pass your degree, but you're going to suffer in CTA if you're not preparing yourself now. So I'm going to go backwards. Okay? And I think it's really important for you guys to do that because so many students I know, they're like, I'm, I'm focusing on what I'm doing now, but without understanding where you're going, you don't understand why exams change. You don't understand why questions change. You don't understand why you're struggling. And a lot of it is because you're not realizing where they're taking you. So your APC is what they call a competency-based exam, which is um, there's no right or wrong as in, you know, 10 marks out of 20, you pass. There's no mark sheet. It's the competency exam, which literally means they look at your answer and go, do you know what you're doing or not? Your whole answer, you know, so you can have this big trial balance or, you know, this big discussion or this big question, and they're not going to give you one mark for each point. They're literally going to look at this and go, does this guy know what he's doing or not? That's it. End of, now that is scary. Like you need to think about that, but that is very scary. Okay. That is very difficult. So at that level, you're not playing a game anymore. It's not like a mark game. You're literally, you have to do the job properly, right? That's mm -hmm. it. End of story. No half, not half pass, whatever. That is very professional based. So you've got to be able to communicate well, and you've got to be able to integrate and apply all the knowledge that you have. Okay, that's very different to how most students are studying undergrad, which is they're learning stuff off by heart, they're focusing on details, they're focusing on theory, they're focusing on formats, calculations, formulae, and you're trying to learn all of this stuff, and then you get to third year CTA and everything starts falling apart. So that's APC, your second board exam, your first board exam. What most people don't know, and if you're in third year and CTA now, I want you to be aware of it in the last five, six board exams. Listen to this. More than 70%, 70 percent, seven zero percent of the board exam are discussion questions, hmm. not calculation, not formats, not notes to the financial statements, discussions. What do you think of? Discuss this, critique that, advise this, hmm. discuss why you calculated it that way. Now, for those of us you know, who went through undergrad, calculations are important, formulae are important, you are going to die <laughs> you don't scare point, us too much yeah, yeah. <laughs> i need to scare you because we need to change things right it can be changed it's not a problem this is cool but i think for a lot of us we didn't get into accounting because we were good with discussions we got into accounting because we're good with numbers and all of a sudden you throw this at me like not cool right so i need you to be aware and you ask me what skills are really important guys your communication skills are far more important than your math skills. Your ability to remember stuff is not as important as your ability to apply it to a situation. If your studying looks like you're trying to be a computer, you're going in the wrong direction, and you're going to be obsolete. If you are studying to be a computer, you will be obsolete.
because we have ChatGPT, we have computers, we have Google. If you can only do what a computer can do, you're going to be obsolete. I need you to talk to me about my situation and tell me how this affects my client, my case study, my situation. So communication skills, guys, vital. For those of you in third year, third year has shifted a lot in the past two years where it was very, very formulaic, very format driven. And in the last two years, in order to meet what ITC is doing and in order to meet what APC is doing, more of your undergrad exams are now discussion based as well. If you haven't come across this yet, I warn you, pay attention. Pay attention, it is coming, okay? So do not sit there and go on focusing on calculations and formula. If you're in CTA and even in third year, you've got to focus on your ability to apply. The skills that you need in order to learn for undergrad, stop cramming. That is not learning, stop cramming because you're gonna you're gonna get to the end of your year forget everything you did and when you get to the next year you're going to have to start over again and that is where the problem is so for those of you in cta going oh my gosh the volume it's so bad there's so much volume let me tell you there is about 20 percent more work in cta than there is in third year you are not covering new material. It is not harder. There is not more technical knowledge. There is not more theory. Like less than 20% is new. If you studied your third year properly, CTA would not be so difficult. So guys, in terms of skills, communication, application, and I need you to start looking at what the future holds. What is the next exam looking for from me? What is the profession looking for from me so that I can adjust my studying and make sure that I have my eyes on the right goal? Wow, thank you so much, Yvonne. And um, I think everyone that has joined is really appreciating getting, you know, practical insight on how, you know, to better their chances of um, of getting higher grades. Um, since we still have time this year, you know, to improve our studying skills and, you know, exams are just around the corner. So thank you so much for, you know, for the advice and the insight. And, um, you know, coming back to you, Yvonne, um, how can students improve their mindset, you know, when it comes to addressing the anxiety and frustrations of studying? You know, um, often we find ourselves afraid to ask for help and uh, spend more time trying to figure things out on our own. So, you know, um, right now people have received their semester marks and mm. um, others have gotten, for example, 13% for their audit semester test. <laughs> and um, yeah, it can yep. be quite daunting. And you know, you talking about CTA, especially, you know, knowing that uh, the majority of the people that have joined us are, you know, doing their third year. So, like, yeah. you know, what advice uh, can you give us when it comes to overcoming anxiety and frustrations and, you know, remembering the goal? Um, this, is, this is what I focus on and this is what I'm currently researching in my master's as well. So, it's a very, very big topic. It's something I'm, I'm incredibly passionate about. Um, and it's something that I believe is absolutely vital to, to your success. Um, and as you say, in decreasing your anxiety. What, what us accountants struggle with is that a lot of us got into accounting and we were fielded towards accounting because we got very good marks at school. We were good with memory, we were good with numbers, we were good with like science, accounting, maths-based stuff. So we were kind of guided towards this profession because a lot of us did well at school or, you know, we didn't struggle at school. We're like, maybe we were average, but we weren't like really struggling to learn. The problem is when we hit areas and when we hit levels in our later studying where we do start struggling, we don't know how to deal with it. Because for us, struggling is for losers, right? In high school, like we didn't struggle. We, we kind of knew, you know, if I put more work in, I'll get more marks. And now, you know, you know, you can study your auditing and your financial management for three hours and come out more stupid than you went in. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> that's normal, right? But we don't know how to deal with that. We have no experience with failure. We have no experience and we have no resilience for struggling. So one of the things that you know that i work with with my students is you have got to make friends with struggling you have got to change the way you feel about struggling with your studies the moment you struggle your brain goes 
oh, what does this mean? This means I'm slow. This means I'm not going to make it. This means I'm going to fail. I should know this. And that's also why you don't ask for help because you feel like there's something wrong with you. Everybody else seems to know what's going on. They all seem okay. Meanwhile, they're all crying themselves to sleep as well. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. They're also struggling, but everybody's keeping quiet. It's cool. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're okay. Yeah, shame. It's hard. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, it's rough. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've got to change your relationship with struggling. Struggling is learning. For some reason, us as accounting students, we have lost and we do not understand what learning is. We think learning is memorizing stuff. Quick, 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 quick. In, 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 in. Recite it to you. I'm gone. That, that is not learning. Learning is like, how do you drive a car? It doesn't matter how much you remember all the steps of driving a car, right? You can remember them off by heart. You can watch a million YouTube channels and you can recite to me all the steps of driving a car. But the very first time you get behind the wheel of a car, what happens? It's a mess. It doesn't work. It's a disaster. You stall, you drive into something, you freak out, whoever's driving with you panics, freaks out, and you have to struggle through that process. And it goes because your brain's got to figure out how does this work, muscle memory, coordination, bits and pieces. That is what learning is. So we don't ask for questions or we don't ask for help because we're worried what people will think of us. We don't ask for help because we remember what it feels like to feel smart. And we want to get back there and we think that something's gone wrong because we're not like that anymore. And so that's where the anxiety comes from. The anxiety comes from the expectation gap that I should still be doing as well as easily. Every hour I put in, I should be getting better marks for. I shouldn't be struggling. Guys, struggling is learning. If you're not struggling, you're not learning. Sorry, we're not okay with that. We are not okay with that. So you have to make friends with discomfort. You've got to make friends with struggling. You've got to make friends with failing questions, with failing stuff. Fail questions while you're studying so that you don't fail the exam. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. Too many students I know will spend the entire semester theory studying and they will start their first question a week before the exam. And then they don't know why they failed. They didn't have time to practice. They didn't have time to work because like, I haven't finished my theory yet. I haven't finished my theory yet. I, haven't, I don't feel smart enough yet. And so we back off. We back off. So in terms of your mindset, the biggest thing, it's called a growth mindset, the difference between a fix and a growth mindset based on uh, 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 Professor Carol Dweck's work. Massive, massive topic, massively researched. The difference between wanting to stay somewhere that you're safe Safe means I don't risk looking stupid. I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to get this wrong. I'm not going to make mistakes. So we stay safe. We keep redoing questions at levels that we already know. We like to build confidence by doing questions that we can do. And we feel like, okay, I'm building confidence now, but we want to stay safe. People who stretch themselves are people who want to do new things. Elon Musk, do you think that he likes working on projects for problems he's already solved? No, he's like, that's so last year, not interested. Give me a new problem. Give me something I've never done before. Let's see how this works. He's not worried if it doesn't work out the first or second or third time. He's not worried, but we are. We're like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I know how to do this. I'm just, I'm just going to gonna say. So if you're feeling when you're studying, if you're like, I want to stay safe. I don't want people to know that I'm struggling. Don't want to ask for help from my lecturers. I don't want people to know I'm failing. I don't even want to know that I'm failing. So I don't do questions because when I do questions, then I fail. And so I just back off and I leave it alone. That's where your mindset is. It's not about being positive. I don't care if you feel positive or not. I don't care. What I care about is what work you're doing. It's very hard to stay positive for such a long career journey. It is ugly. It is difficult. You're not going to stay motivated. But what you have to be is comfortable with being uncomfortable. Hmm. Very important. Wow. Thank you so much, Yvonne. And Thank you for reminding us to, you know, overcome our fear of um, failure. And, um, you know, it is something that, you know, top students already do, um, you know, developing relationships with uh, with their lecturers, you know, asking for help. And it's us who are not um, excelling and, uh, you know, scared of asking for questions and, you know, scared to reach out, you know, to top students to assist us, you know, when the ones, you know, who need to improve on that. So. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for, you know, that uh, insight. It also shows, you know, uh, the amount of experience that, you know, these individuals have. So I'm sure each one of us, you know, in the chat and, you know, on this live, uh, you are actually benefiting from this. So thank you so much, Yvonne and Albert, you know, for, for the insight. Thank you so much once again, Yvonne. And, um, you know, I'm posing this question to, to Albert. Um, you know, you did talk more about, you know, the article. So um, 
as you can tell that most of the students who are here, you know, they're either in their third years or they're doing their CTAs, you know. So the biggest concern, concern uh, the biggest concern for accounting students in their, you know, undergrad or CTA years is uh, whether they'll be able you know, to find articles and um, sign a training contract with a firm. And um, as someone who has like recently completed articles in January, uh, of this year congratulations by the way like give us a bit of background on your experience during your articles and um practical steps you know to ensure that students are able you know to find um a training contract okay yeah no thanks thanks for that question um yeah thanks for asking it while my memory is still fresh <laughs> um so just the overall experience of doing articles um so just so uh, as most of you guys know uh there's sort of like two general streams of of articles uh of of types of training contracts that you can sign the first one being um training uh train articles in public practice uh public practice means you know dealing with um uh, an audit firm being an auditor and then uh, articles are uh, outside of uh, public practice. So it, the, the, the acronyms for that are doing POP uh, articles or, so, okay, let's forget the acronyms. I can't actually remember the other acronyms. <laughs> but <laughs> private practice, sorry, um, in, in public practice or out of public practice. So the the a good example of 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 doing articles in public practice would be to work um for uh deloitte and you're auditing you know other companies that are listed on the jse and um you know you 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 get the you are auditing financial statements produced by that company you know to give assurance uh that they are free from uh material misstatements and then um, doing a training contract outside of pu public practice would be for those students who really enjoy, let's say, management accounting, for example. If you enjoy um, calculating your, you know, net present value and you make, you know, uh, management decision making, you can find articles uh, um, at other companies most the the biggest players in this space are normally the banks so in when you when you go there you will not be doing auditing every single day but you might um help the the company uh with other types of decisions that they have to make um whether to make a decision on giving a customer credit um checking whether that customer uh their risk profile has increased or decreased uh whether to take on new lenders so that sort of uh financial um, so, um if you enjoy management accounting that might be a route that you would want to consider um so those are the sort of two distinctions and majority of people do audit uh, articles so training in public practice so i i was one of those people and i did my training at uh a very small uh firm called nolan's uh in johannesburg where um i was one of the 12 trainees that started there in 2020 so yeah this uh this is much smaller than your other firms like your grant thornton your deloitte your pwc where you would have 200 to 400 uh other colleagues starting with you uh, when you, uh, so it, it was a much smaller environment and I got to know um, everyone very quickly uh, before lockdown started in March uh, of 2020. So that was a good experience. I went to one client and then lockdown happened and I started to work uh, remotely just like everyone else. Um, so overall, the doing audit articles um you are allocated to a team of let's say five to twelve people 
and you've got you know these set of financial statements that you have to 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 give assurance on you know just like you know you need to give an audit opinion at the end of the day that's what the client has called you there to do so you know the audit manager would come there and split up the work uh you know you're a junior you're you're a senior you know uh based on your experience levels and you guys would work together and you can ask for help and after that client is finished after the audit opinion is given you move on to the next client so as as um the first thing that i thought was very beneficial for me was that this allowed me to see different industries this allowed me to see different types of companies i remember um i i went from auditing a company that uh makes and repairs um trains you know uh locomotives i had i would have never dreamt of uh you know seeing those things up close you know uh i've been in in the how train but uh i've just never thought about how that type of business works so this was uh, amazing because i was like oh my god like it was a new world completely seeing that you know what type of locomotive they are and how they're repaired and just how the whole industry works from uh bringing in the locomotives into the country into getting them ready for use into them running and them making money from it and you know that whole chain you get to see the whole business and so i thought that was incredible uh because there are some industries which you would have never gotten exposure to that you get to see and also when you see these different clients you get um exposure to like the different types of accounting softwares that that are available on the market uh in my undergrad degree we had a project and uh we were wor working on pastel and i thought okay this is you know this is very nice but when i got to start doing articles i realized that there are way more you know accounting softwares there's zero pastel say uh, uh sorry sap and it's it you know the list is endless so just learning about you know the different types of accounting softwares there are is also very fun and you know how they process information from capturing uh to processing and then you know to producing output in the form of financial statements so you know that's that's um very valuable as you will see and also another key thing to doing you know uh articles and getting different um uh, getting exposure to different clients and environments is that um while doing my training i didn't necessarily before starting my training i didn't necessarily know you know what kind of chartered accountant i wanted to be you know as a chartered accountant you're very good in auditing you're good in management accounting you're good in tax you're good in financial reporting you're good in a variety of things you have uh, you know you have knowledge that is very broad so when you uh, apply this knowledge on different clients it gives you a real feel of what it is when you're doing a, a tax project if you have been allocated to work on a tax project you can you know have a feel do i really enjoy doing tax you know uh, then when uh, you are there uh, doing consolidations for a client you can Hmm, do i enjoy uh doing a uh, group reporting for example so it gives you uh, a real feel of what kind of um work you want to do after you qualify as a chartered accountant so the exposure is really valuable because it points you in the right direction yeah. and another thing um you deal with different types of clients some clients are very busy you know they they want to run their business and when you're coming to request information they see it as you're wasting their time or you know they they could be doing something more important so that you know is a good humbling experience because you need it it allows you to learn how to work with people who might have differing priorities how to you know negotiate how to improve your communication and people skills because if you just send an email and you know you've got give me 200 invoices and the client 
we'll look at your email and be like, okay, I'll attend to this. Let me just uh, make the sale, you know? Uh, so you might, you know, you follow up, see, uh, you know, you might, uh, you question yourself, what's the best way for me to connect with this client? Maybe it's better for me to go into the office and just say, uh, hi, David, I just need 200 invoices. I know you're very busy. Uh, can you just show me where you file these invoices and I can get them myself, you know, or if they are on your system, can you kindly give me access to your system and I'll get them. So you, you learn how to best deal with people um, in a professional manner, which is a very, you know, uh, important skill to have because that kind of skill translates outside of work even. Um, you, you might have siblings or, you know, parents who want you to do certain things. So, you know, it, it will teach you how to manage differing uh, responsibilities and priorities. And the last thing which I thought to touch on was ethics uh you know in audit you know ethics is such an important topic and it's always tested you know your you've got your king your your king uh your your king and your companies act and you know there's always an ethical question here and there and sometimes as students we struggle to answer those types of questions uh but now when you are doing your articles you know you get to apply you know if uh, an ethical mindset in the real world mm -hmm. what if um you're at a client mm -hmm. and uh, you know you notice something suspicious what would you do so you you uh, you might maybe try to speak to a manager that you trust and say i saw this thing is this thing okay uh or you might make the mistake of going to the client and saying no no no, no this is uh this doesn't look good you'll be arrested you know that might be an <laughs> error <laughs> You know, that might be a big, big error. So you get to apply your ethics in, 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 in real time. And, you know, you, you, uh, the audit firm gives you enough tools to make ethical decisions, which I think is a very valuable um, life skill because, yeah, we, we all need to aspire to be more ethical. So... That's a bit uh, about just the tr uh, my training as a whole. Um, and with respect to practical steps to getting a training contract, I would say the first point of call is to um, just be very attentive on campus. I know that um, there are normally accounting fairs uh, at some universities. Yeah. Please indicate... Uh, in the chat whether there's an accounting fair with where, where firms come in to to you know present yeah. what kind of uh training contracts they offer yeah uh, because when, yes when yeah, in, yes okay because when i was in undergrad you know firms there would be a day where you know all the firms you know would come in and just you know set up and you could ask them questions and they would give you information so please look out for that. I see UJ has it. No, that's very good. Um, so if you haven't, if you think maybe you might have missed it or, or you don't know what we are talking about, what, whether they are career fairs, maybe just speak to a lecturer at, um, on campus and say, um, I'm looking to get um, articles. Are there any sort of um, contacts or is there a career fair that you're planning to have in the year? Then note down the date. Uh, on which that career fair will happen and don't miss it like put it on your calendar make an alarm and go there because it's very valuable and you can connect with hiring managers and you can get very useful information uh, on getting articles then another thing which i would recommend that you do even as a second year a first year or third year or cta student if you already haven't done this is just to develop a cv you know if you if you don't have a CV, maybe spend some time on a weekend, maybe an hour or two, just to put together a CV, you know. Um, you can look in, on YouTube on how to put together, you know, a CV. It just has to be a very basic CV representing yourself and, you know, what you're doing and what, you know, what you are trying to get. So I think investing in a CV is very, very important. And... Um, another platform that I would recommend that you join is maybe LinkedIn. If you can join LinkedIn, 
and from there maybe um look for some of the firms you know your you know your deloitte your your bank your 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 big four companies your smaller firms and just connect with those firms and you can find who the hiring managers are and ask them questions on that platform that would be a very useful thing um to do to put yourself um in a better position to get it to to get a training contract yeah all right um thank you so much albert for for the insight and you know uh sharing with us the experience that you've had uh through uh during your articles you know some of the experiences were a bit humbling but um you know it's part of the process as they always say so yeah thank you so much once again albert for that and um just posing this question to both uh you and yvonne um you know knowing as students you know we mostly have tunnel vision on um we solely focus on achieving academic success you know during our studies so uh yvonne as a study coach and a mentor um what advice do you have for students in order to, you know, increase their chances of, you know, getting articles without compromising their academic success, you know, as Albert has indicated that, you know, you need to build a CV, like what are, what are some of the things that, you know, you can do, you know, to uh, improve your CV? Mm. Um, I think, you know, it's a large part of this depends on where you are, uh, yeah. who you know, um, it's all well and good if you're at a university that has a career fair, it's great. But if you're at a distance learning university like I was, you've got nothing. There's nothing. Uh, these days, it's a little bit easier. So, you know, again, I, I, I agree with Albert. Get yourself on LinkedIn. Put up a professional profile on LinkedIn. Uh, because some firms are now doing um, online virtual careers, you know, um, career discussions where they want to, you know, attract people to their firms. So you want to look out for um, you want to look out for those types of events where they're inviting people who might want to do their articles there, and that you know that helps you to reach out a little bit more. The, I think the reality is you know while you're studying or with your eye on your training contract, um, the biggest thing that's going to impact where and whether you get a training contract is going to be whether or not you've passed CTA right mm. you can be the most amazing most talented most skilled most professional most amazing student on earth but if you do not have cta they will not hire you okay mm. the reason for this is because training firms know that the cta pass rate is very low it is very low so if they hire you without cta there is a very high risk that you will never pass cta and so they waste mm. their money on you because you will never be able to write your board exams and you will never be able to actually qualify as a ca so firms that take on students who do not have CTA, who take on trainees who do not have CTA, they take a very big risk. They also take on a very big cost because you are always wanting study leave. And that is expensive, okay? So in a way, I would almost say, you know, it's not about when you're studying, focus on getting CTA find a way that you can study CTA and finish CTA before you start your articles for a number of reasons. For me, um, I worked as a bookkeeper for eight years before I started my articles. I knew that I was going to have to take a salary cut. I knew it was coming, but I also knew that I needed to get my CTA first. Um, it's, it's a very, very difficult thing to study, to study part-time, especially CTA. It is very, very difficult, especially if you've never done it before, so your focus needs to be on getting CTA. I would recommend if, you know, if you're not in a position where you have a lot of contacts, again, I agree, get yourself a LinkedIn profile. And the best skill you can have is the skill of being rejected, which means you put your CV together and you just find, you know, you're Googling audit firms in my area, you know, training firms in my area. And you're Googling them and you're finding them on LinkedIn and you're sending the HR people your CV and go, are you looking for training clerks? Are you looking for article clerks? This is where I am. And you need to keep doing this. You will be rejected a lot, but it's not, you know, I see so many students asking. It's like you guys are looking for a list of firms that are hiring as though there's some kind of list somewhere that you can just click on and go, oh, I'm going to take you, you. This doesn't exist. Okay, it does not exist. You're going to have to reach out. So in terms of your skills of finding a training contract or finding one, 
um, unless you've passed your CTA, um, it is a lot more difficult. And even if you have, uh, the big four don't necessarily, it's not that the big four will always take you, uh, you know, depending on where you come from, depending on their quotas that they have, uh, depending on the size of the town that you're in, um, all of that will, will impact that. So you need to spend quite a lot of time reaching out and finding out and asking. And as accounting students, we're generally not so good with that. We like the information to come to us. <laughs> we, want, like, we, we don't want to reach out and ask because we're worried what people will think. So we want to like, you know, you're right, Albert, there's what, what Psyca will do, what Psyca does is they give on their, on their, on their website, so what Albert has just put in the chat there, Psyca will give you verification of whether or not that firm is a training firm, you know, just in case you land up working for someone who says that you're doing articles and you're actually not horror that happened to me by the way i am a victim of that um so you you know you can look on psyker and say here's all the training firms in my town i'm just going to email everyone but then you have to be okay with rejection lots of ice cream lots of chocolate lots of crying but you've got to be okay with rejection thank you so much Yvonne, for that and um yeah i see that albert um posted i think it's a link in the in the chat yeah, just a reminder to to everyone um, who is joining us uh, on this Google Meet and those who are streaming on YouTube. Uh, feel free, you know, to leave your questions, you know, in the in the chat box. Uh, you know, get to your questions at the end of the session. So, yeah, thank you so much for that. And um, Albert, as an accounting student, what is the value of building a relationship with a mentor? Um, is it something that you'd recommend for um, us students who are still, you know, in university? Yeah, that's a very good question, uh, Enoch. Um, so I see that, you know, having completed the journey and just reflecting on my own, like, feelings and, like, my where my mind was in my undergrad, in my CTA, up to this point, I felt like, you know, it's, you know, when you are in, 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 in second year and you're looking at the third years from, from my perspective, you know, I was just amazed. I was like, oh my God, these guys are in third year. How did, how did, how did they even get there? You know, I'm struggling with these modules and, you know, and when I was in my third year, I, the guys who were doing their CTA were like gods. How did you even pass third year? Like this thing is showing me flames, flames, like, oh my God. And, and even just seeing a guy doing articles, just hearing, like, oh my God, wow, I wish, you know. So, uh, so I just felt like every single year I would look forward and it would seem almost unreachable, you know. So, so fortunately for me, um, I reached out to a guy who was already qualified as a chartered accountant in my third year of studying. And I remember, um, we had a chat and he 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 you know he just gave me some advice uh you know he explained to me his story and he gave me motivation and you know once a year at least he would check up on me to see how i'm doing and so i felt like i took so much energy from 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 him and uh, it was just uh very nice to see um to have that encouragement and to see that it was possible. So from an undergrad, uh, undergraduate perspective, I would definitely recommend that you have a mentor. I know it's it's uh, very daunting to reach out to someone who's maybe in their third year, because you know, you're like, I hardly have time. How would someone else have time just to speak to me briefly? Um, mm -hmm. But if you can maybe um, approach your lecturers and just bring about this idea that uh you're looking for a mentor your lecturer themselves might not maybe you know, they might agree to say okay it's okay I'll, I'll be your mentor or they might refer you to someone most likely that would be the case someone in practice or someone uh who they know a friend of theirs that might be a chartered accountant or might not be a chartered accountant and you know that person might spend uh, a few minutes or you know uh what's up you or just give you a um some motivation or some tips here and there. I mean, you're not going to them to say, this is the homework or this is the test I'm writing next week. And I would like you to help me. 
uh, that most likely won't work from a mentorship perspective, but it mm. might be things like, um, you know, they might come to you and just give you, you know, a, a very hard, you know, talk. They might be a mirror, you know, you know, something that you need. Like, okay, so after class, what do you do? Then, you know, you might actually start to question yourself. Yeah, after class, um, I take a nap, then the nap turns into, you know, like, you know, you, it might be a sounding board, you know, and they might be like, okay, maybe after after school don't do this try to do this or try to approach your lectures like this or just you know advise you on other aspects of your life that you might be struggling with uh like for example if you're studying um from home and your internet is not working well just you know other things outside of academics that they might be able to to guide you with so build uh, having a mentor would be very useful so um in my cta year I reached out to a random guy on LinkedIn. You know, I just typed a message and said, hello, uh, his name is Munya. Uh, I'm still in touch with him. Hello, Munya, how are you doing? I've seen from your profile that, you know, you qualified as a chartered accountant. Congratulations on that. Um, I'm a CTA student and I was just wondering whether you could, you know, um, give me two minutes to chat to me, you know, to be my mentor. And I was shocked the response was positive so um don't be afraid to reach out to people on linkedin or just you know to ask your lecturers to point you in the right direction because as it is you'll find that most chartered accountants are very welcoming and they are happy to give you uh, a 30, 30 minutes to guide you because they most likely you know 90 percent face the same issues that you faced so um don't be afraid to do that and even now that I've, i'm a qualified chartered accountant i have i've i've signed up to get a mentor someone who qualified uh uh before me uh someone who can guide me navigate the first you know few years of becoming a chartered accountant so it's very useful to have a mentor uh someone who has walked the path that you are walking someone who's ahead of you it's uh it might not be the best thing to have a mentor who's on your level because they might not have time or they might not guide you appropriately so i would say reach out to your lecturers and reach out to other qualified people on linkedin just send them a very polite message uh, asking them just to you know give you some guidance or some advice you will be surprised that most of them will respond positively so um i would definitely recommend it 100 percent all right um thank you albert for that um yeah i thank god that i have a mentor you are my mentor so yeah thank you uh i would also recommend people getting mentors not albert because he is my mentor but like, yeah someone else thank no it's you. okay you can reach out to me guys you can i'll send you an email at the end of the chat so if you you are interested in something like that no i am i can refer you to someone or you can talk to me so it's okay enoch don't take me for yourself all right uh thank you so much albert and um outside of the resources that you know students have on campus uh you know we talk we spoke about um you know career fairs uh where are some of the places on the internet uh where students can obtain useful information to help them you know on their path to you know becoming um accountants you know i also know yvonne that you know you have a website called um accountingstudyadvice.com um may you please uh share with us um what inspired you, you know to start this website yeah um i think when i first started the website i had a a little tagline and i think it might still be in my youtube channel and it was um and it, to some extent it still is is i wish someone had told me that <laughs> and that is why that is why i started it so that website um i started in 2013 so this year it is 10 years old so i've been at it for quite a while um i have the website i also have a youtube channel um so there's a lot of information on there as well um it's an incredibly valuable resource because one it's free we like free free is good there's a lot of information on there but i'm also i spend quite a lot of time trying to connect students with people and conversations that they probably wouldn't have um, and certainly, you know, conversations I wouldn't have had as a student. So 
some of my so you'll find um, I have a section on my blog called interviews with role models and I contact I contact various professionals who I feel will add value to students and I um, I interview them I, I do you know video interviews with them and I put them up on my YouTube channels and my um, and my website um, so this past week, actually, I've just interviewed uh, someone I, I, I interacted with a while back. We used to work with on a project a while back. He's now the head of education, head of accounting education at IFAC, which is wow. like really impressive. So that's in New York. So, you know, IFAC is like the organization that sets the code of professional conduct that South Africa has adopted. So this is like the umbrella organization, like Psyche reports, not reports to, but Psyche like has to work underneath IFAC. And he's the head of accounting education there. So fascinating discussion. Um, and part of the discussion is also talking about his journey, you know, because you're kind of like, geez, you must be really smart to get a career you know, like, like that, you know, and just mm -hmm. listening to his journey. He went off and worked for a church for three years, uh, you know, yeah. left the career behind him. It's fascinating. Um, I've had um, Vincent Matolo as well. Him and I had a really, really great chat. Um, for those of you that don't know, he has been the chairman of Psyker. So he's actually like Psyker's chairman for the past two years. I'm not sure if he's going to run again this year. Um, and it's just so good to speak to him because he's just a human being. You know, you just, and these are the conversations that I want you to have. I've had, I've had chats with Psyker executives you know, with audit wow. partners of firms and stuff. So you can just go on there and take a look at these people who you kind of go like, oh, wow, you must have been so smart. And they're like, yeah, I failed this. And this didn't go according to plan. And that didn't work out. And I, for me, I find that really comforting. I also have a lot wow. of information on there about, you know, mindset, study techniques, study advice, um, you know, and I just, I want people to have access to information and insights that may impact their decisions um that i know is not easy to find i know it's not you know it's not and not everyone can find mentors you know it's great if you can um but not all of us you know not all of us are able to find these people um and and sometimes a mentor can really help you in one aspect but there's still other stuff that you need you know so yeah i think there's an enormous amount of of free resources and for those of you who haven't used it yet um you know chat gpt is an amazing tutor. ChatGPT, mm. like as I said earlier, I'm studying. I'm studying my masters, and there's a lot of stuff in there that I'm like never heard this before. Don't know how to spell it. Like I have no idea what's going on. And ChatGPT mm. is my tutor. Promise you. Like, and that's at master's level, right? And I'm like, what is this? How does this work? This is what I think. You know. And I, the beautiful thing is, you can actually sit there and say, like, I think that this is what this thing is. And ChatGPT will say, no, you're wrong or no, you're right. So you can use, you can't, you don't have the excuse of going, oh, I don't have lectures or I don't have resources or like oh, I'm stuck and I've got nothing. Huge amounts of information, huge amounts wow. of information. Wow, Yvonne, uh, this is so inspiring um, considering the amount of people and um, the level of people that you know you interview and um you know what you keep doing uh it's quite inspiring for for all of us here and um you know we are not only a ca you know um there's this myth that you know once you're a caSA all you do is you know just punch in numbers and you know earn a hefty salary but um looking at yourself you know you're more than just a ca you know you are doing your masters now as you said and also you are a business you're running your own business like so how are you able you know to balance this you know they always say that you can't balance greatness but you know you seem like you are doing that so well so how do you find the balance you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable you know you have to like for the stuff that i do in all honesty the most important thing for me is marketing you know, marketing is not something that we did it's not it wasn't a major it wasn't something that we touched at all but you know, for the stuff that I do, for the work that I do, I have to have a YouTube channel. You know, I have to have social media. I have to have, um, I, you know, I have to know how to do these things. I have to reach out. Um, I'm not comfortable with sending, you know, sending quotes or sending, you know, emails to to companies asking them if, if, if they'll pay me for, you know, for helping their students or whatever. But these are the things I have to do. Like, I don't like it. You know, I just want to teach. <laughs> so... Um, it's not so much about the balance of time 
um, as it is about realizing that you always need to be looking for what do I need to learn? Are there other skills completely outside of accounting? You know, if you focus on just those specific accounting skills, you're going to be sitting in a back office somewhere, you know, doing that job for forever. But the world is so big. Um, and so the more that you can focus on different skills, additional skills, get your studying out the way first, right? So don't go and collect different studies while you're still studying. Let's focus on CTA first kind of thing. Um, but but yeah, I think it's exciting that we're living in a space with the technology that we have. I want students to start exploring, like what can I do that I can travel or that, you know, I can I can include my hobbies or the stuff that I'm passionate about as an accountant. You'll be amazed that like the world is much bigger um, as long as you're prepared to be uncomfortable and put yourself out there. And that that's tough. Wow, you are an inspiration to, you know, all of us, and I'm sure, you know, people in the chat, you know, they can attest to what I mean when I say, you know, um, you're doing brilliant and, you know, we thank you and, you know, wishing you all the best with, you know, all your commitments. So thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. And um, talking about CTA and, you know, juggling between, you know, um, studying, working and all these amazing things like Albert, um, you know, you did mention that, you know, you completed your CTA while completing your training contract. Um, can you please speak more on, you know, your experience of, you know, juggling training and um, your contract and, you know, training and also studying? Because I see, you know, uh, there are so many students in the chat, you know, who are interested, you know, in finding, um, you know, the right the right time to, you know, do uh, their training and, yeah, like the, finding the right balance. Um, yeah, that's a very, very um, good question. I wish... Um, I had some guidance as well before I started uh, before I started my articles and my CTA at the same time. So, I'm for for doing articles for me. That was the first type of work I had ever done in my life. You know, uh, that was my first job. So I didn't know what the working world entailed. You know. Um, you know, being a student, it's, it was very nice um, because, you know, you get a nice small semester, sorry, uh, like a mid-semester break. And then when the, that semester is finished, you get a good month, you know, to just to rest and prepare for the next semester. And then when you've written your final exams um, in November or at the beginning of December, you get a nice break up to like the end of Jan. So that was nice, you know. So as a student, you get all of these holidays to recharge and, you know, look at other things. But when you're working, you're on the clock every day, <laughs> nonstop. And, you know, and you have to apply for leave. And leave is not a lot. So, I'll, you know, that was one of the shockers. So I was like, hmm. So I'm essentially working full time here. And I'm also studying full time. You know, the time is very limited. So that was... Uh, that was one of the challenges, just managing my energy on a daily basis to ensure that I give enough energy to my work and I give enough energy to my studies. So that was uh, one of the challenges because I remember at the beginning, you know, I was so excited about doing my articles. I was very happy of these other trainees that I'm with. I love my managers. I love the fact that I'm finally here and I would spend a lot of energy and uh, you know i would even work a little bit after hours because i wanted to be a perfect employee <laughs> so i found that um when it was time to hit the books it wasn't looking good i would watch <laughs> i would watch one you know like video one tutorial and mm -hmm. i would by the time i'm supposed to actually get to doing the question i'm tired and i would conveniently tell myself a story that yeah Tomorrow, uh, tomorrow there are no. Ex tomorrow is a perfect day where I'll have enough energy to do these questions. I promise. Like, let me just look at the slides and summarize this. Make nice notes. I had plenty of highlighters there. You know, so I was doing the easy stuff. So, I yeah, I just didn't um, manage my time properly and to have enough energy to focus on my studies. So that sort of. Um, 
you know, and before I knew it, I was writing a final CTA exam and ah, you know, the whole year is done. And obviously that the outcome wasn't good because I wasn't adequately prepared. So what did I change in my second attempt of CTA? Um, as Yvonne has mentioned, uh, you know, I learned to be a little bit more realistic with myself to, to become more comfortable with being uncomfortable. So I focused uh, more on doing questions and spent less time, you know, looking at videos or slides. I would spend 90% of my time doing um, the questions that were available. And I think this was very good because um, I was essentially preparing for the actual battle every day. So when the actual battle came, I was already, you know, um, I was, I had already seen all the tricks. I had already seen uh, yeah. what, what challenges, what curveballs uh, could carve my way. So, and another thing um, with respect to time management, um, I saw that, you know, I, I didn't have a car during my articles. So, I would need to take a taxi, you know, from Johannesburg. Uh, so I was working in Santon, but living in Auckland Park. So I would need to take a taxi, you know, go to, you know, MTN taxi rank or Brie and, you know, taxis take time, you have to wait. And by the time I get home, I would be very tired because, <laughs> you know, uh, because of just the journey getting from uh, the office to my, to my place. So I realized that the best thing for me was to, work work on my studies before going to work so i would i would wake up early do a good two to three hours of of studying then get to work so by the time i'm it's seven o'clock or eight o'clock i'm at work my studying for the day is done so there was no guilt i just felt so good uh and even if i was late even if you know the project at work was challenging you know, I had a clear conscience that I had, you know, like it was the best feeling knowing that, you know, you're studying for the day is done before the day even begins. So I feel like as a student, you have to experiment and see what works for you, best for you in your situation. Um, you'll find that some firms maybe uh, have specific programs where they say you can work half days. Maybe you can start working at like 10 a.m. or you can knock off early at 1 p.m so there are different um structures and support that firms offer to students so once you start your training see what the landscape looks like and see how you can develop a strategy to become successful in your studies um and also if there are other trainees in the firm who have re uh, recently completed their studies part-time you can chat to them and to see what worked for them and just to see how they structured their studies and try it out for yourself to see if that works for you yeah uh thank you so much albert for for that and um we really appreciate you know the insight um talking about you know starting quite early in the morning before before you go to work um which is quite a challenge because some of us wake up late. So, yeah, I mean, now I just want to um, ask Yvonne because, you know, she did speak in the chat, you know, stating that um, most of the big four firms and most of the bigger accounting firms, you know, they require someone who have just, you know, completed their CTA. You know, so um, on our live, you know, I've got students who are in their third years and um, they are interested, you know, in doing, um, um, you know, training you know doing their training contract and also doing cta part-time you know is that something that you know you'd recommend considering that they might not actually get in those big firms no don't do it guys <laughs> <laughs> no stay away run no seriously. you have been warned. Um, just say yeah. no just say no no seriously i think you know exactly as as albert mentioned what um, in, in a way, it was kind of it was kind of funny to listen to you because I I worked and studied you know from from school. So even though I was I was working as a bookkeeper, I wasn't doing my articles, um, but that meant that I had years of experience of having what I kind of call the three. You know, you have like a two shift day, 
So if you think of, of your 24 hours in eight hour shifts, you work for eight hours, you sleep for eight hours, and then there's another eight hours hanging around. You know, and when you think of it like that, you're like, grief, that's a lot of time, which it isn't, you know, when like, but when you're working and you're studying for years, you get used to the fact that you're working for eight hours, you're sleeping for eight hours or probably less, especially as exams get closer. And then you've got this entire other shift that you need to work um, and study, you know, not, not work, but you need to study with. When you've been doing that for years, you're a lot more fit. You're, you're, you're fitter. I call it work fit. You're able to mentally focus. And guys, what, are you, what you're not aware of and what you don't realize if you haven't done it is the mental energy. You know, you're not going to work and like stamping a piece of paper. You're not sitting on like some kind of production line doing the same mindless thing day in and day out. You are working. You're stressed. You're anxious because it's your first, possibly your first job. And so you want to get things right. And you don't even know how to use the photocopy machine, but you have a degree, but like you don't even know how the the, the coffee machine works and everybody's shouting at you and you're taking longer on everything and your manager gets annoyed with you when you ask them for help and i mean it's just a mess like so the, the levels of anxiety and the mental energy of your articles is high it's a very high learning curve you're expected to work at a high level and now you're studying as well and now you're studying like you know at this level at cta it is a very bad idea if you're not work fit I really would recommend if you need to work, get another job. Get another job that you can just work, you know, mm. without the mental stress of a training contract. Start your training contract after CTA. The pass rates for people who are doing CTA and working at the same time, especially when this is the first time that they're working, is very low. It's not good. It's just, you know, the amount of energy you don't have. Exactly as you say, and it's so funny because that's exactly what I tell my students is you get home and you're like, well, I have to study, but I'm just going to watch videos, you know, or I'm just going to read the textbook. Or I'm going to make summaries. And exactly as you say, it's easier because you don't have to think about it. You know, you're not putting yourself out there. It's not the same mental energy as doing a question, but it's not as effective, you know? So my honest is like, my honest opinion is, if at all you can avoid it, don't don't start your articles and CTA at the same time. It is it is you are setting yourself up for a seriously stressful time. Um, and I, I get CTA out the way. You know that's like the biggest the biggest hurdle to you qualifying is CTA. That's the biggest hurdle. Like once you're over that hurdle, the rest like you have a much 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 higher chance of actually finishing this qualification so if cta is your biggest hurdle you got to make sure you structure your life around making sure that you put yourself in the best possible position to make that happen and it's easy you know like albert i'm sure you can agree it's easy now for you to say oh i failed cta and i had to redo it and now when we hear it it's like mm, wow shame yeah okay that's hectic good well, yeah, well done for doing it again but i bet that was gut wrenching. Like it's all easy to say now, oh, I failed CTA. But like, if you put yourself in your shoes at that time, failing CTA is like a kick in the like it's a kick in the stomach, man. It's like, and then they kick you further because now you got to go do it all again. You know, you only failed one or two subjects, but now you got to go study everything again. So it's like, let's kick you while you're down, you know, and then start all over again. So it's 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 rough. Don't do it. Just say no. <laughs> um, thank you so much for the advice and thank you for the honesty. You know, I mean, it, if it was someone, you know, they should have just, you know, sugar-coated everything, say, just do what you have to do, do what you're good at, you know, those kind of advice. But, you know, we appreciate the honesty and, um, you know, it shows that, you know, you also have experience. And you're yeah, talking about failure, you know, I was, I, I witnessed it, you know, when you fell with your CTA um benji jumping on movies and uh, i was eating ice cream you know just you know <laughs> sorrows sorrows so yeah you wonder, I like, what have i done with my life this is <laughs> never gonna come right i've wasted yeah, everything so. yeah <laughs> but yeah finally he is here you know um the qualified ca and yeah so this leads me to the um the last question um the last question is um you know what are the types of career paths you know that are available uh with accounting as you know as the core skill so albert um can you please let us know how 
is the experience of working in you know the audit industry and also on um please give us you know your experience as you know a hr accountant uh, running their own business okay i'll i'll go first on that one and um i would say that studying um to become a chartered accountant and then completing your articles doing audit prepares you very well to become um someone in you know who works in the audit industry um as an auditor or other um, functions in that space because in your articles um you you essentially you know are doing auditing from you know being a junior team member uh in your first year to you know progressing up the ladder to actually managing a very small team um on an audit project in your you know at the end of your articles so when you qualify as a chartered accountant and uh working in an audit in the audits industry as an audit manager for example an audit supervisor you have been very well prepared throughout your articles and um the only sort of new skills that you might have to add on is that maybe now you have more responsibility and you have a bigger team and maybe you are seeing new industries but with that um there are good training tools in your environment in the environment uh when you join so you you do ten you you pick up the project management skills quickly and um as i said myself right now i i have a mentor because i'm only starting my professional career as a chartered accountant this year and i think i need to hone some and develop some project management skills how to relate better with you know more junior colleagues you know i was as a trainee i was you know a team member waiting on work to get allocated to me and you know i would execute that but now as you know moving up the ladder to being an assistant manager for example i have to be more proactive allocate work and decide when things are done and communicate with the team to make sure that you know whatever we decide they they are doing is on track and if they have any issues we can identify those and solve them quickly so working in the audit industry is i would say is probably not the most um unexpected or challenging career path to take as a chartered accountant i think a good portion of us maybe probably over 50% of chartered accountants work in this profession so i think uh it's a clear defined industry to work in with uh you know clear ladders of success, you know like a clear ladder that you can move up that you know you become an assistant manager you become a manager then you know you can Uh, study further to become an audit partner so um if you really love audit and enjoy working on projects which you know uh which are short and you know you work on a project for like 3 months or a month and you move on to the next project work on an, on the next client and you like dealing with people and working within a team then it's probably a very good fit for you um so i would say um it's it's um I don't know whether it's a safer career path uh but it's for us <laughs> who are risk averse and um haven't really explored business uh it's sort of um uh an easier career path to transition into yeah thanks yeah thanks <laughs> thank you Albert for that um and yeah to you Yvonne um you know your experience you know being a business owner and um a chartered accountant um so what skills you know do you think you have um harnessed you know being mm. a chartered accountant and running um your business mm. um yeah the, the the skill of learning that you really don't know stuff you know um and the fact that the world is 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 very very broad so my um my husband and i co-founded um tobaldi online education which they do um uh online courses for people studying you know their cta and undergrad through unisa so we started that in like 2014 we started with usbs you know like the usbs with like workbooks yeah. and stuff and then we moved to to fully online so we did you know we did that 
and um we sold out of that business we bought into a listed company um a, a group of um a group of companies uh that was subsidiary of a listed company and so we basically ran the group of education companies and then we sold out of that before we moved um we moved moved here and um my husband now right he's also ca he runs an e-commerce accounting practice which focuses on people mainly in the state who have amazon shops you know shopify ebay because their accounting is very different <laughs> like it is very very different you know um it's not it's it's really not the same there's some really interesting challenges so that's what you know that's that's his focus and obviously my focus is you know the study coaching and, and lecturing um, and I think what I've learned is the importance of building non-accounting skills, people skills, networking skills, absolutely crucial. You know, you'll find as you move higher up, you know, professionally, there are many, most people I know who move into different roles and, you know, get not promoted, but get into other roles is because of networking. I would far rather hire someone that I kind of know you know, and I've got some experience with, then just looking at your flat CV, because, you know, you sit in front of me and you tell me, oh, I am passionate about my career. Really? Really, really? <laughs> like, how do I know that? Like, what proof do you have? So everyone, I'm passionate about accounting. Yeah, but you spend your weekend watching Netflix, not actually studying, and you're always bitching about your studying, and you're always complaining, like, mm, prove it. You know what I mean? Like, prove it. So there's a lot of stuff like that, that if I know who you are, and I've worked with you before, I've kind of seen you from a distance, we've engaged, even if it's just on LinkedIn, you know, that we've connected a bit, you're more likely to get roles that way than from sending your CV to a million places. This is how things work, you know? So networking, very, very important. And just the realization that the underlying skills you build are probably more valuable to you in the future than the accounting stuff, the tax stuff, because all of that changes. All of that changes. You know, the accounting standards when I first started studying versus now, very different. Um, you know, auditing hasn't really changed that much, but the changes in the world are massive. Technology, you're gonna be working with stuff that doesn't exist at the moment. Your ability to change, your ability to learn, your ability to deal with people, um, it's a very exciting, it's a very exciting world, much bigger than you think. Go and open a company, you know, selling clothes. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing stopping you from creating your own little like fashion brand, you know, empire. Your skills being a CA is going to mean that you've got better management skills, better strategy skills, better accounting skills for your finances. Auditing means that you know how to set your business up so people aren't stealing from you and your controls are good. And you've got these kind of thought processes behind you. Um, so don't limit your idea of what an accountant should be to like, I'm either gonna be tax or I'm gonna be financial management or I'm gonna be auditing or I'm gonna be, you know, I'm gonna be a financial accountant. Um, the underlying skills, mm. mostly your ability to learn, assimilate information, deal with stress, sadly, um, and continually learn, absorb information and use it is incredibly valuable for your future. Thank you so much, Yvonne, for that. Um, you know, you have not only answered the question that I had, but also one of the questions that, you know, I just saw in the chat, someone was asking about, you know, how, how do you remain re uh, relevant in, you know, in your profession? And yeah, so thank you so much for that. And um, do you have time to take any questions or uh, I think Okay. All right. Um, maybe let's just take two more questions from the chat. Um, if you have questions, please just raise up your hand. Then I'll, you know, open the mic for you. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Please unmute yourself. Then, Mercy, you you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for a wonderful session. So I'm doing my second year uh, routine, is, sir but um, I'm a foreign national. So I just wanted to ask in terms of securing articles to the extent where you, uh, you, you become a certified chartered accountant, because when I did a bit of my research, since I am a self-funding student, which means my chances are that I will continue my studies with UNISA, uh, when it, 
I when you do a post grad, there are like three options where you have to choose like between South Africa, Namibia, and Zimbabwe. And by the way, I'm a Zimbabwean. So can you please maybe highlight to me or explain to me further how that works? Like if you do a psych accredited degree, can you do the Zimbabwean one? And also because I've been trying to apply for articles and they've been like a stumbling block and it's because of my nationality that I would love to start my articles as soon as possible. But if it was not because of that, I would have also preferred to start my articles after my CTA. I hope I've articulated myself in a way that you'd be able to respond mm -hmm. to me. Thank you. All right, um, thank you for the question. Um, Sorry, I'm not sure if you're able to hear that. So if any of you, Albert or Yvonne, you can just answer that. Um, yeah, okay. So the Zimbabwe, um, the Zimbabwean uh, CA process to some extent piggybacks off of South Africa because it is quite small. So um, th there's, there's quite a lot of interchangeability, like um, the Zimbabwean ITC, for example, is basically the South African ITC. Um, and the only difference is is tax. So there is, you know, there is articulation that way. Um, South Africa, you're going to have to get a work visa. Um, it is very difficult for foreign nationals to, um, you know, to get articles. Again, you're in a much stronger position if you have CTA before you do that. Uh, again, you've got to think about the fact that a company is going to have to go through the process of giving, you know, working visa, get the whole process done. And the risk, as a UNISA student, your chance of passing CTA first time is very low. I'm sorry, it just, unfortunately, you just don't get the support, you know, that you would at, a, at, a, at another university. So it's very, it's very difficult for firms to invest that kind of time and money in you, working visa, and, you know, you're not studying your CTA, and then, they, like, they're doing all of that, and then you never go any further. Um, so... I would suggest, you know, as far as possible, you know, get get your CTA, your options will open up further. But unfortunately, in your situation, you're going to be sending out a lot of CVs with requests to, to help and, and figure out. I'm not entirely sure if you can get a working visa before you get the job. Um, you know, like, can you apply to work in the country so that you can, you know, so that you can apply for jobs or if you have to wait for someone to give you a job offer that you can then use to get a working visa. So just do some research on that as well. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Uh, Mercy, I hope um, your question has been answered. Uh, so there's another question uh, question in the chat. Um, it's saying, how do you prepare for the hard journey of completing board exams? And what is the difference between uh, CTA full-time and uh, part-time? You're on mute, Albert. Yeah. Um, I'll come in on that one. Um, so the first part, I think, is to address the the, the first uh, CTA full-time and part-time. Um, so as Yvonne had already mentioned, when it comes to doing CTA full-time or part-time, it's recommended that you do it full-time because it's very challenging to do CTA while working. Um, and when the, the second part, which is um, how do we prepare for the very difficult journey of completing board exams? So as we mentioned at the beginning, there are two board exams. The initial test uh, of competence, ITC, which is written just after you have completed CTA, that board exam tests your CTA knowledge. So it essentially is like, sitting for your CTA exam again, you know? And the, the questions might come in a different format that now they are in, in, in more integrated and that you're writing it in a different fashion over four days, two sessions a day, uh, sorry, over two days, two sessions a day. So the format might be different, but the content that you're getting tested is the same or 90% similar to your CTA content. So if you're writing your first board exam, immediately after passing your CTA, you have a very good chance of passing your 
first board exam. In fact, if you can look at the SICA website for statistics on the pass rate of people writing their first board exam for the first time, you find that the pass rate is like 70% or even much higher. So I would not be too worried about the board exams. If you can go through the hard work of completing CTA, as Yvonne has already mentioned, that is the hardest part of qualifying as a chartered accountant. So get yourself to CTA and do your best there. And the board exams are much uh, are, are, are more doable because you are well prepared for them. Um, CTA prepares you for the first board exam and your training contract prepares you for the second and final board exam, which is the APC. So I would um, put more attention to passing CTA. Yeah. I just, uh, sorry, I just want to jump, I just want to jump in there. Um, when you say, and I'm not entirely, entirely sure what the focus of the question was, but you asked what's the difference between CTA full-time and part-time. So we've spoken about the fact that it's incredibly difficult to study part-time, but I just want to clarify if you're asking, is there a difference between the way that your year is structured? Like, can you do, you know, in your degree, you can spread it out a little bit more. Like, you can take it slower if you're doing it part-time. Um, in CTA, you know, PGDA, you don't get to do it any slower. Your exams are the same. Your year is the same. You've got to do it in a year. So you don't get to have any kind of difference if you're a part-time student. You've got to, you know, do the whole thing in a year, pass all the exams at once, um, and then move on. So it's not as though it's structured any differently for you. Um, UNISA has a two-year CTA, which is kind of confusing for people. So they kind of go, oh, maybe that's, no, 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 no. CTA one is for people, it's like a bridging thing for people who took too long to do their third year or they came from other universities, they came from other programs and didn't quite get the, you know, the necessary requirements to get into CTA. So they do like 60, 70% of CTA in year one, in CTA one. And then in CTA two, you do 100% of CTA. So it's not splitting it up. You know what I mean? Like, because people, people go, oh, I'll do CTA one and two, and then it'll be easier. No, it won't, because you're doing like 60, 70% of it in year one, and then you're doing everything again in year two. So it's still just a one year CTA program. There's no such thing as a part time CTA program that allows you to, like, two subjects this year, two subjects next year, spread it out. If that's what you're asking, that doesn't exist, which is why we're saying study at full time, guys. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. And um, yeah, uh, Patricia, you have your hand raised. Um, may you please unmute yourself. Oh, hi. Thank you so much for the program. So, uh, I've been working for like 11 years now, in a, it's an accounting practice. But then he's a SIPA member. He's not a SICA member. So now he's not also registered as a training, you know, institution. So now I'm a bit reluctant in, you know, I've been working so much, you're getting so much paid. And then I'm a bit reluctant in after, you know, I'm doing my first year of CTA with UNISA. So now when I think about uh, now, like after I finish my CTA, like next year, if I pass or when I pass, I'm thinking about, this training contract for me is a little bit stressful if I can put it that way because it means that I, I might be getting a little bit lesser than what I'm getting now and I don't think I'll be able to sustain myself so I'm just wondering if the, the there is another route that I can take if I can base it maybe for example on experience I mean yeah um you can so the fact that you're at a cipher office means that I assume that you've got a portfolio of evidence that you did articles through your cipher. In other words, you've got some kind of formal portfolio of evidence of the work that you did to qualify as a cipher member. I presume you should. Uh, no, sorry, I'm not a cipher yes, no? member but my employee is a cipher member. Okay. So what I did last year okay, is okay. I did up, yeah. I did apply for this yeah. ATSA. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. So, no, no, no. Yeah, so I thought, because I did query this with Saika, um, I did mm. apply for this 
um, accounting te technician. So I am a member of SAPA. So I thought from here, uh, after I finish my CTA, then I'm going to go to AGSA. And then, you know, while mm -hmm. I'm with my company, mm -hmm. I can go, because we do have like uh, other associates mm -hmm. that are CAs, then I can try to get mm -hmm. some bit of experience to add on to what I have and then mm -hmm. go and apply for the CASA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's what you're missing. You you can go go and you you're gonna want to talk to Psyche about your position as well. So always make sure you get you know the right information. Psyche does have the the power to reduce your articles by a certain amount, um, but it generally is about is a maximum of six months. So you'll do two and a half years of articles instead of six. Fine. However. There is also an option they call RPL, which is recognition of prior learning. So you can go onto Psycho's website and go and look at their recognition of prior learning. They'll give you all the information that you have to fill in in order to do that. The problem that you're going to have, and the problem is that the training contract is a formal training program where you literally have to prove, I have done a trial balance. And your manager has to sign off and go, yes, she has done a trial balance. She knows how trial balances work. I have done that. And if you've just been working for a company, you don't have that type of evidence. So you can't go to Psyche or to an audit firm and go, hey, I've been doing consolidations for three years, and they go, prove it. And you go, well, you know, talk to my manager or something. So your biggest problem is going to be proving um, the competencies that you have. So you're going to want to talk to Psyche about the possibilities of recognition of prior learning, where, you know, you have to fill in a whole bunch of information and a whole bunch of stuff. And then they look at that and go, do we believe that she displays the competencies um, to, to give her recognition for this to reduce, you know, to reduce her articles? The likelihood of them giving you full exemption for articles, very, very little. It's very unlikely that they're going to say, okay, you, you know, you're exempted from articles. You might get one year, you might get two years. Um, but I don't see, I don't see a way around that. Your other option to become a CA is to go the SEMA route, uh, get qualified through SEMA, and from SEMA you can then write APC. So you can you can skip CTA, you can skip um, ITC, and, C and and you can go straight to to APC if you're a SEMA member. So that is the only other option that you have at this point in time to qualify as a CA. Uh, Patricia, I hope your question has been answered. Um, so yeah, I don't see any more questions on the chat, uh, from the chat and also from the YouTube live stream. So yeah, I think, um, yeah, that's, uh, that was the final question. Um, yeah, I just want you know, to take this time to, you know, okay, is there another question? Anything is, I have been asking to find graduate programs, are there any? Okay, so someone's asking if there are uh, graduate programs, if there are any. Okay, so we'll take two more questions then, yeah, that will be the end of the of today's session. Uh, so, Lelua, you may um, unmute yourself. Hello. Oh. I'm so sorry. Um, I left my, I have, I've been commenting on the comment section, but it's fine. Maybe you can't see it on your side. I was just asking, so I'm doing my diploma in accounting. And I just wanted to ask on how to become a forensic auditor with that. Get yourself a bodyguard. <laughs> forensic auditor. <laughs> <laughs> make, sure, make sure you can afford bodyguards. Work on your self-defense skills. Get yourself a bodyguard. I, I I'm actually not even kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Forensic <laughs> auditor is dangerous. Like... It is a dangerous position, hey? Like, you know, I mean, we know, like, the, the CEO of ESCOM, like, had, yeah, they, they tried to poison him. I mean, it, this is not a joke. So, like, you want to be very careful about this because that's very, very serious. But your best option is to qualify as a CA as, uh, and then qualify as a, a, you know, as a registered auditor and study further, study forensic accounting, uh, study forensic accounting and forensic auditing after that. So I, I would say your base qualification, you know, your best base qualification would be um, would be a CA, um, and then you know build build on that. And obviously a CA with audit articles would would probably be your ba your best um, your best foundation. 
Thank you. Um, all right. Um, once again, I would just like to extend my um, word of thanks to both Albert and Yvonne. Uh, you have been amazing and we thank you for taking the time and I uh, thank you for your insight and also sharing with us your experiences. And also um, thank you for, you know, opening doors and, you know, opening our eyes, you know, to see um, some of the things that, you know, you can do with uh, being a CA and also just showing us, you know, what entails to be a CA and the career path, you know, we really appreciate your time and um, thank you once again for being here on this um, Saturday afternoon uh, where other people are partying, but, you know, we thank you so much. And um, yeah, I'll just leave it, uh, I'll just ask, you know the participants you know just you know to send maybe a message in the chat just you know thanking our guests from from my side you know i just want to thank you for putting this together um I, I think people need to appreciate that this is something that you did for free so as much as we're taking our time you've taken your time to actually set this up and go around and find people who are prepared to do this um so we need more people who are prepared to reach out to other people and and give them time and information and insight so from from my side i appreciate i appreciate the time you've taken to do this as well thank you so much yvonne thank you so much yeah and also from my side enoch thanks because yeah i finally met yvonne and i've i've i was digging for gold on um on your youtube channel and your website for <laughs> Yes, Yvonne. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad to hear so, that. I'm so glad to I mean, hear that. All of those interviews are like it's amazing. I think it's oh. you know it, they they do a, a world of good. So I'm I'm, I'm so really glad. I'm, I'm so really glad to hear that. Uh, happy you. to have met you. So thank you for <laughs> introducing <laughs> me to Yvonne. You know, but yeah, guys, thanks so much for taking your time on a Saturday to be here and for investing in your futures. So thank you so much for this. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Albert and, Yv and Yvonne. Um, I have pasted, you know, the links to the, uh, their businesses, you know, their websites, uh, and also to my website, um, you know, Inox Local Tutoring Services. We offer online and, you know, in-person tutoring for, you know, high school and university students. So you can check out the website. And yeah, in case, you know, you are still considering whether, you know, to... Um, do your training or you know as Yvonne said please focus on your CTA you know you can you know join us and be a tutor you know you'll be making money on on the side and you know focusing on your on your studies and um for the last time I just want also to thank um our partners you know Golden Key and also um Abasa and all the Golden Key chapters and um Abasa chapters thank you for assisting us you know with marketing of this event uh, we thank you for, you know, the work that you've put in and um, thank you all to the participants, you know, for joining us. And yeah, once again, Yvonne and Albert, um, it has been an honor, you know, to interview you and thank you so much and have a great weekend. Awesome. Chat again, guys. Ciao. Right. Yes, thanks so much. All right. Thank you.